Make some noise for that too. John P. G. What's up, man? I'm you better take your hold off of that, man. Don't worry about it. We can we just hold it. So yeah, apparently, you know, they got us some uh, some cupcakes, man, with like, uh, you know, they got my face on it, you got your face on it, you know, feel like a man law violation or something if I eat it, but I'm gonna put they it over there for now. Turn me into a cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's a delicious, actually. Did y'all enjoy your cupcake? Yeah. Hey, there you go. John P. Key, man. It's good to have you here, bro. I'm glad to be here. Let me tell you what's funny. What's funny is that I've been radio for uh, maybe 29 years. 30. And, yeah, 30 years. Oh, 30. Pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close. Um, man, this is the this, this second time that I've had to sit down with you. Right. Second time. That's a mess. We got to, we got to talk more. <laughs> we got to talk more. Yeah, right. what, what do you remember of me? I mean, you know, we've been knowing each other for a very, very long time. But when you think about me, what, what do you Bo, remember? Katie Bo, I remember a radio announcer that I always wondered why he was not a gospel artist. Because what people don't know, and maybe they do know, is he has always been an exceptional singer. Not just a singer, but a singer that sang in tune. So um, I, I used to always wonder what, what, and he was in the right city, around the right people, he knew everybody. I'm gonna take him and back. Uh, I brought that up because we talked about it on the way here. Okay. And one day I challenged him on that. Why, why aren't you pursuing your your vocals and he really told me almost 29 that's why I remember how long it was I remember the station it wasn't this one it was a smaller building and um, he says to me something that I've carried for years hmm. um, he ministers to people that he never meets so you have an audience and you have a platform and you have a gift so I calmed down at that point and I learned that never try to push people into the area that you think they're called uh, uh, to be in. Uh, okay, so okay, all right. When I say KD, that's what I think. Okay, all right, well, good. I, I, did, I don't remember none of that, but okay, you're the man. You're the man. Uh, let, let's, let's go back a little bit, man. Um, so uh, the, the, the 15th child 15th or 16. out of 16 children, you know, he's born in Durham, North Carolina, yeah. outside the county yeah. line, which incidentally, why did you yeah. put that line in there? Um, I, I always um, celebrate where I'm from. Many artists um, get a little recognition and they forget home. Um, I had a very humble beginning. I didn't know I was poor until I got older and realized that everybody in America didn't just eat white beans and whole cake bread every day. <laughs> so, um, and, and that just, it stuck with me. It's, and, and to this day, um, I'm working on a major movie project now, and mm. I'm bringing that up in every other scene. Uh, just, just reminded that that those times and those years humble me to a place of understanding what my true call is. And um, uh, not to break super spiritual, but mm. um, that's what God said to Aaron. He said, "You know, I've given you a call, and um, you and your sons have a, a, a awesome task." But if you don't do that, you'll die. Mm. And, and, and I, I, I've always said ministry to me uh, is a little different than others. I'm a pastor. Never taking a dime for the spoken word. Now, that doesn't mean it's bad to really? take care of your past. Never, never, never took a, never took a salary. And um, um, I don't get to some of the good conferences because of what I believe in. I, I'm, a, I'm a beyond the four walls. And I say that uh, pastoring a, a rather large church. But my joy is going to get those that are lost. And all of that comes back to your question. Um, being raised in a place where thank you matter, gratitude matter. We live in a, we live in a time now country, where, yeah, yeah I mean, it's country. And that country will stay with me forever. I don't care what I attain, what I have, what I own. And, and what scares me is today's babies feel so entitled. They're, they're supposed to have it. You, you, you're supposed to give it to me. And I'm 57 years old, been in the industry almost 40 plus years. Wow. I still thank God for the little things. Wow, man. Yeah. So you went to uh, you went to school in North Carolina. Yeah. You e eventually went to California, right. did some more schooling. It was there that you met and did a gig with Cameo. Tell me, what was it about you that made them say, "Hey, uh, I want you"? 
Well, actually, Donald Byrd was the plug. Um, some of you may may remember in 79, 80, um, Donald Byrd was traveling all over America with the jazz program. So you had fun, you had cameo, you had um, um, the Blackbirds, um, uh, 125th Street Band, mm -hmm. all these jazz bands, but they were all, uh, we, were, we were jazz students during the day and we were funk artists at night. Okay, <laughs> you know? okay. so, so I was actually... Um, I did one of my first gigs at 14 with Peter Frampton, headed to the West Coast. Wow. So when I get to, um, I graduate early, 14, almost 15 years old from North Carolina School of the Arts. And I go to Marysville School of Music where I study jazz under uh, Dr. Charles Ashworth. And um, so years later, um, I'm watching a, um, a Billboard magazine and I see um, – uh, um, uh, Charlie Peacock, who's a, a, a famed producer in Nashville, and I recognized his face. I said, that's Charles Ashworth. It was my uh, professor's son that really taught me jazz improv. Wow. So wow. just to have this big circle of California, North Carolina, country, jazz, gospel, uh, and then I got a job with um, the Miss Black Universe pageants. I was training vocals, so really? Cameo was coming back. Aira Mills had just got the job as bass player, and I, I hooked up. So I always tell people, Cameo really was a free trip from the West Coast back to Durham. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. You, the, the, you were, were you, were, did you vibe California? Were you comfortable there? Or, or was the country in you saying, I can't rock with this, I gotta come back to North Carolina? No, actually, I was in California, and I realized that a bag of weed in California was bigger than a bag of oh yeah than a bag of weed in North Carolina. So I had a plan. So really? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go and tell the truth. I, came, <laughs> uh, okay. I, I did come back with the band, but I moved and I set up shop at a place called Double Oaks in Charlotte, oh. where I was a uh, uh, I was a pharmacist. Okay. Okay. All right. I sold dope in the, uh, at the drug at the drug store. Well, it was actually a little grocery store, and it's still there in the neighborhood. Now watch God. Who has this testimony? I sell drugs in this neighborhood for about two and a half, three years. God saves me on the street, and now I own almost 50 acres in the same neighborhood. Wow. So now I get to witness, teach, have access programs. All the people I poison to now. Uh, I get to uh, throw my arms around him and, and minister to him. So it was, uh, I'm told the story goes, it was a street revival, right? Or a tent revival or right. something along those lines. Who was yeah. it that was preaching? Do you remember that was the person that kind of brought you to Christ? Not at all. Uh, it was $40. It was a young man who got killed for $40, and I witnessed that. And that night I said to God, Father, if you get me back to Arden Street, I lived about two streets over, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to wait on my book, but I'll give you a little bit. Back, in those, little days, bit. Okay. back in those days, um, um, cocaine was passed through a lot of funeral homes. I was at um, Bad Boys 2 sitting in the movie, and me and my daughter, and I really cried because I said, that's the first time I've seen the true story, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna leave it around that. But there was a setup at a, a funeral home, and it's still there today, where the organ is behind the post in the chapel. And I, I always send people back there so they can ask the new owners, "Why is the organ behind the post?" And they'll always say, "Well, it's better there. We have more room." That's not true. That organ was behind that post because I used to pick up my packages in North Carolina, and I would fly to Chicago. This is a great story. My and I would connect at a place called Miller's Pub in Chicago, and I. I would be so convicted. I love this story because there was always a seed in me. Though I was doing wrong, I still had a seed in me. It was something in me. And even when I was in sin, when we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. And then I would go to a church. There was a pastor in Chicago. His father um, had a church. Jeanette, what's the name of the church? Donald Alfred's father had a church. Katie, I would go do my dope business, then go to the church and just weep and cry, catch my flight back to Charlotte the next day. Wow. So the, 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 that whole transition of California uh, really actually brought me to salvation. Now, who was the man that really ministered to me? It, it was Jim Baker of PTL. I really? got a job, yes. I got a job. He's hanging in my little office. Uh, um, um, I got a job at, at, at um, a, a Buffalo Park. B.B. Uh, Winans and C.C. would sing at the huge park, and then they'd let park. me come sing at the and, little park. Uh, uh, I, I really heard the word of the Lord. I surrendered, yes, that night on the street, but a word I, I think I retained after really hearing a clear word of what salvation meant yeah. and what it meant to me.
Let's do a little word association, man. Um, when I give you these, uh, <laughs> when I give you these names, just, just, just a couple of man. You good? Just a couple of. I think you good. Uh, men of standard. This is the first word that comes to your mind. Um, um, legacy. Um, James Cleveland. Wow. Um, um, beginning. The goat. Rance Allen. Really? Okay. Let me pause. Rance? <laughs> really? Rance is the goat, baby. Now, you know, I'm tripping because now that I see, I see it, I see it now. Yeah, Rance is the goat. So, did you think success when you were when you were learning to to sing and, and do ministry and what have you? Did you think success was? I'm leading with the question, but you tell me if it's not yeah. it. Doing it like Rance did? No, because I never really wanted to be a singer. I love. Wait writing. a minute. Wait a minute. I, I got you. I got you. Really? I, I never wanted to be a singer. I love writing. Even right now, I, I, I'm a ghostwriter on so much stuff. I always wanted to write. Wow. Uh, I got my first chance, and you're old enough to remember this. I got my first chance writing for the Hawkins, and I wrote a song for Edwin's Conference, and I had a guy, it was Jesus Lives in Me, that was supposed to sing it. The day of the session, we can't find him. He's high. He's scared. We can't find him. So back in that day, if you didn't perform your song, you didn't get paid. Whoa. Yeah, they'd have the sheet music, but if you didn't perform that song, you didn't get your check. So I had, to, I've been teaching all week the parts, so I'm hoarse. I got the tenors right, the altos right, and if you Google that song right now, you're like, Jesus Lives in Me, uh, Edwin Hawkins Music and Art Seminar, I'm hoarse. So I don't have the range of all my partners. I don't have the Daryl Coley, I don't have the high voice of Walter, so I'm just this country boy from Carolina but I need to get the people's attention because I need my song to work because back then if your song didn't work it didn't make the record so I'm singing that's <laughs> every rhythm savior in the world today oh! and, and, and that wasn't working so oh, yeah. I started saying mm, go, 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 making noises man Wait you gotta listen minute. to it remember oh, you're messing and, up right now. and the more noises I made the more folks stood up so I'm making noises I'm singing in my fall cellar which I got from ranch I'm doing everything and by the end of the song the song ends uh lives inside and I do the me 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 yeah that was John P. <laughs> Key. that was like the introduction to so now I go home thinking, uh oh, I can sing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but but it was all that. My first introduction, I think you guys heard me first. I did a corny commercial years ago. I ended up writing a commercial and working. It was for Hallmark. And it was on TV. It was, that's why I'm giving you this Hallmark. And I hope that you will see what I'm really giving you is a part of me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus wasn't in it. But uh, yeah, but that was my introduction as a writer because I wrote that commercial and the singer didn't show up. So. So, so you made yourself okay with your sound because your sound is unlike anybody else. And oh, by the way, when I think the goat, I think you, sir. Wow. wow. Yeah. No, real talk. No. Yeah. You know, so. Let me let me go here. When I was in North Carolina, raised in yeah. North Carolina, yeah. um, I remember there was a radio station, WBXB Love 100.1. And I was in my bed in, uh, where was it? Uh, Coin Jock, I think I was. Uh, Camden, Camden, North Carolina. Man, this song came on the air, um, Jesus is Real. I'm saying... Who is this dude? And I, and I remember sitting up. I'm just a kid, man. Yeah. I remember sitting up saying, "This is, this is, this is crazy." And then that was when they played more than one song. Yeah. They played this uh, song called "It Will Be All Right." And then you got towards the drive at the end. By this time, I'm losing it because it sounded like quartet. Yeah. Okay. I don't know who. Or what what it made you okay with that vibe and that right. sound, but yeah. take me through that process. That's one of the best questions I've ever been asked. Nobody's ever asked me that. And I'm I, I enjoy I'm gonna enjoy answering that. Remember that. When, when, Remember yeah. that no, no, and he's and, and, and watch what happens. And look at what he said. He said, I heard the contemporary vibe, and then all of a sudden he takes me to quartet. Yeah. That was my M.O. What I would do, wow. I was a jazz guy. I was a, uh, the little funk music was in my heart. But I had a grandma that loved gospel music. Wow. 
So I would go home and Jesus is real. Uh, first of all, was written for uh, Hezekiah Walker. He told me to write a song for his record. He said, I want you to go in and I want you to go in the studio and I want you to sing it for me so you can send it to me just like you want it. And I went in the studio and I loved it so much, I took it back. Oh, okay. But I could hear right, yeah, right, singing right. it. I could hear and, it. And, and, and then, yeah, it was a Hezekiah Walker. It was a New York vibe. Uh, it Will Be All Right was the song. If you think John P. Key, and you've been following me for years on every project, I'll give you a little country. Every yeah, yeah, project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it worked for me as an artist. People say, well, how are you still filling houses and selling houses? I believe it's because I've got something for everybody. Wow. I got something for the babies. I, I, I want everybody to have that experience he had when he sat up in the bed. He heard the little contemporary. That got him. And then he, I didn't even know he's from North Carolina. He just let that out. I yeah, thought he was in Georgia, baby. But listen, I, I, that was the hook. That traditional I still do it to this day. Uh, we just did a major video and we shot movie uh, footage down in Miami or, 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 or South, uh, South Florida last week. And I used that same thing. To, and I looked in the audience and we saw the footage the other day. And I saw grandma clapping. I saw the babies clapping. That's crazy. So it just really works. It works for me. So I'm going to give you another story. Yeah. So uh, I went to see you perform for the first time. You were in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, you were in an auditorium somewhere. It was like a gym kind of situation. And... It was one of the most, it was different. It was the most surreal experience that I had or have ever experienced. I think the only time I would probably have a different experience if I, well, when I see commission in concert, okay? But it was, it was phenomenal. You on stage giving out money? Hey, you gave out $50 to somebody, because they was praising, and then she kept on praising, and you gave her 50 more dollars. I'm like, man, I sure wish I would praise. I feel like, wow. But after the show was over, this is the point of the conversation. After the show was over, my aunt, they had a flat tire. Wow. Okay? And I didn't know that she told the story later. You rolled by, apparently, where they were, mm -hmm. and you couldn't stop because you was en route to somewhere. You gave her a hundred dollars because you couldn't stop. You're a different kind of dude. You got to tell me right. what what causes you to be that way. Only God could have set this up today. This started in Atlanta. I was in Atlanta on a Sunday evening, um, and it took me a long time to find out who this bishop was, but I found him. Uh, I got to show up at his Sunday service and bless him again. There was a bishop here at the time named Joseph Pryor. He had a Sunday night broadcast. We're broke down, and it cost us $80 to get our bus fixed. He told us, if y'all come to the church, I'll fix the bus. Mm. We came to the church, was on the broadcast, saying, and whenever we got ready to leave, he gave me $100, and he said this to me. God will bless your ministry if you do what took place tonight. Continue to sow into others. Wow. Now, I came from a giving grandma. Grandma would feed folk just walking off the street. Joseph Pryor fixed the bus and gave me a $100 bill. Back then, a $100 bill was $2.8 million. <laughs> hey, brother, it was big. It was big. I remember taking the picture with it. And, and people don't know, from that day, and that was the beginning of my career. From then, I love it. I give thousands and thousands of dollars away. I love doing it because what I tell people all the time is I've seen God Take my seed and multiply it. And I know it sounds good for a preacher to say, but I go into church on Sunday morning waiting to pay a mortgage. Um, in, in that same city, we paid off a lady's house. Wow. What God has done for me in my career. Wow. And, and I, I let people know I don't need to do that. You know, God has blessed us musically. But what it does, it continues to open the doors and windows of heaven to bless us, man. Wow, man. Tell me this, what, what, what was the situation or uh, the person, if you want to say it like that, however you want to answer it is fine, that really grew you the most? Uh, if you would ask me, I would candidly say it was my divorce. I'll tell you that. And it was, uh, that was tough. And going through that was a lot. And whatever immaturity I had, I would say 75% of it was ranked off by that time. Right. But you still right. got you know, a little left. But um, what was it for you? Um, you opened the door just now. I, uh, I just went through a divorce 
and uh, it was Ooh. it was no. really it was really rough. Um, okay. It was rough because it um, um, it wasn't cheating on the wife or the wife cheating on me. Sure. It was we were just in a place of not standing on the same platform she's an amazing woman um uh, we have three baby daughters well the 15 year old is like her dad she's gone off to college already wow. Wow. but that was one of the roughest times of my life and here, here's why um we came to a great understanding but what people don't understand is when the lawyers get involved oh, brother. it just oh. changes the game oh, and to hear the lawyer making comments about my ministry. He doesn't. He's only given because he's hiding millions, and you know all of the garbage. You know, and wow. you have to be there for these babies. Wow, You've got to smile and be strengthened. And this is the first time I've even revealed this anywhere. Um, but what made me be honest about it today was you said something that I really know that many folk don't ever say. It still grew me up. I thought I was mature already. Yeah, I thought I had it, yeah, everything man. in line. But it grew me up spiritually too. Because yeah. you, you still have to look in the faces of the people of God that say, you know everything. You are, he is our pastor. He is our pastor. So for two years, we said nothing. Hmm. We said nothing. It was only six months ago maybe or, or sooner that I really revealed what really happened. Yeah. But here's the maturity. To be able to walk worthy of your call in the midst of adversity. Mm. I need people to understand. On, and, and, and when I tell you this, Come Georgia, on. Peach is a wonderful woman of God. And I celebrate her even now. And it's just strange because... The, the turmoil and all of the stuff people think you sure. go through well, at the end of the yeah, oh yeah. yeah well and and that was the issue because you you heard all kinds of things you know but we have to be mature enough to understand we still have to maintain these babies i had the boys they were older she had the babies they were younger but in it all even the other day i don't know if you know uh socially i Made a joke last week, which I shouldn't have done. I said, I found my boo oh. in Florida. Oh. And I posted it, and I said, I'm going to show you who she is in two days. It was a 90-year-old lady that I met. Yeah, Mother Hughley. Y'all, she was so gorgeous. She came to the after party both nights. Wait a minute. Yes. Come on. And she had little quirks and things she would say that just would make me laugh. Man, she told me, now, you know you need to hook up with me. I'll show you how to cut a chicken right. Uh -huh. I don't even know what that means. You want to cut that chicken, I know that. But cutting that chicken at 90 was just gorgeous. Well, I, I, I put it on social media. Social media went crazy. Wow, People thought I was introducing a new girlfriend. It started digging up. Folk was done. But it just shows you at some point. You have to have a life. And I tell them, now, don't sleep on me now because I'm going to be happy again. Yeah. You yeah. know, but yeah. we have to understand at the end of the day. That, that, that's a great question because I, I get it. I don't know how many people get it, but it matures you in a way that, that nothing else can. So, And I just thank God that he's covered us to a place where we are going to take care of these babies and do right by yeah, man, pain can do some things to you, man. Yeah. The pleasure never could. Yeah. And so there you go. So you got nine children? Nine. Nine. Name them. Nine. First names. I don't even believe you did it. Come on. Justin, Chris, Shannon, Aisha, John John, Tredell, uh, Car, uh, Kamari. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the, not the nicknames. Kamari. Janai, I said it already, and Sakaya. Y'all got to clap. That was crazy. That, that's that good. Right there. I did it. Hey, man, wh which one do you feel like is, is walking in those uh, in the footsteps, your musical footsteps? Amazing. Uh, John John has a, a, a dynamite vocal. He, he's not out front. He actually sings with me. In the movie, um, which is about my father in 1947, who gets a record deal on the way uh, to New York, um, the, the, uh, because of the prejudice of the South. Let, oh, stay there, because I want to talk about that movie. That, yeah. I know it's in my notes, but let's, let's let, take let, time let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me go on and grab the, uh, the ones that are following. All the kids have amazing vocals. Mm -hmm. Janiyah's touch with the gift. Janiyah is a 15-year-old, turns 15 in a couple of days. Um, um, John John. Tradell, the humble child, the one that's playing basketball now in, in college, when he was a baby boy, he would turn the volume down on the games 
and he would sing praise songs while he played Whoa. his games. And he would sing old praise songs at the church. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. And I'd be in the other rooms just crying, I'm going to save him, Jesus, save him. <laughs> but um, he won't sing publicly because he thinks we're going to force him into that. I see. And he really wants to play basketball, so yeah. he, he will not sing. But all of them have that touch. Wow. Justin, who's in Nashville, a producer, um, he has a vocal that's amazing. So they all have it, but you don't push him. But when we get around each other and somebody starts the song, y'all already know how to. How yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, the, the song, um, Standing in the Need. I, you know, I never, man, you know how some people say stuff and you don't really know just how true it is, really. Like uh, yeah, James Cleveland was talking about, you know, the, the chest pains all over my body. How, how that happen, James? That lady just walked over there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I looked up the whole, uh, the burns on the inside and the outside of the yeah, body, and it's absolutely. a disease called uh, Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Absolutely. It's, it's a rare, very rare disease, very rare. but uh, with the baby was healed. Did you stay in contact with the baby? I always want to know that. This, he's, these questions are amazing. Can you follow me for the rest of it? <laughs> no. Um, not only did I stay in touch with her, she goes to the church. She's 36 years old now. Whoa. She's doing amazing. A little burn, a little burn, I think, on her cheek, but you can't tell it. Um, uh, amazing baby. Um, 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 everybody asks about, is that a true story? So true. I remember going in. I remember the doctor saying, you got to put on the gear. And it wasn't time for the gear. The mother was crying. We went in, wow. laid her hands, wow. and believed God to heal that baby. Lips At the began time, to seal. Uh, yeah, yeah. All of that, because she was burning. That next day, Jeez. when I tell you God healed that baby's body. Oh, and let God. me tell you this too. Uh, so she gets a check quarterly, not from that song, but an artist uh, took a portion of one of my songs, Rance and I, and he put it in his song. And so the settlement is a quarterly check. And I won't call his name. I need to know R the name. Please, man. Please tell me the name. R. Kelly. And, uh, oh, look, okay, okay. But look, though, here's what's really cool. And, and look, I thank him every time the check comes. Uh, but we know. give that check to her. She's, oh, an, uh, she's an amazing man. baby. Her name is Chantel. Chantel. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Chantel. Yeah. 37, 37? She's 37 now. 37 year old yeah. Chantel. Yeah. Wow, man. Okay, yeah. so um, what surprises you? Like, you, you've seen a lot and one thing I, I've noticed, is especially ministries like yours, yeah. man, you've seen a lot and you hold a lot of secrets. People don't talk about that. Right. Because when, when you are in that kind of ministry, any minister, right. you hold a lot of stuff. You know a lot of stuff. Right. And you can't say nothing. But there are some things, man, that I got to know that when you see it, you're like, wow, I didn't see that coming. Or, wow, what surprises you? This will probably blow everybody's mind. Racism. Right? It, I, you just wonder at some point when you're my age, will we get to a place where we see it for what it is? Um, true story happened yesterday. Um, and I didn't witness it. I wasn't there. So um, Ms. Jeanette, who's um, my personal assistant, the fire chief comes in the church. And this is 2019. There are some cords in the ceiling, and they're there. And he said, I saw them the last time I came. We need them down. And what the, the problem is, they're not hooked to anything. They were up there years ago when I was the ghetto electrician at the church, and I probably tried to hook up some extra lights for sure. New Year's or something. Sure. So we'll get them down. We'll get the lift. It's, the ceiling is super high, uh, 30 feet maybe, super high ceiling. We'll, we'll get them down. But he proceeds to say things that you just wouldn't have said if I had been standing there. So many don't know this, but I have a wonderful studio complex at the church. So instead of driving all the way to the lake, sure. I later have a nice little day bed. So when he comes in early morning, the attendant says, well, the pastor's um, asleep. So I don't know if in the state of Georgia, but in North Carolina, you have to leave that key. So he's walking through my building and my personal areas. And so the guy won't let him go into my office. And he says in 2019, he can't sleep here. Get him up. Why is he laying down? Get him. Just stuff to me that's, you, you really? Would you say that at First Baptist around the corner? So, and then God had him say it to the attendant. Because I need to tell y'all something. I need prayer in some areas. If he had said that to me, I was gonna go I get people off the street that was, don't have beds. And go. I bring them in. Are you, you telling go. me? Because he says, no sleeping is to be done on this property. Wow. Wow. Who are you talking to? Right, right. Get your tongue, uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. All of that. I yeah. just need, I'm just so grateful. But, and I use that. Here's another incident. Um, four months ago, I'm riding down the highway. Three kids come by. They got their little flag. And 
they showed me a little gun in the back seat, but I could tell it was a 22 or looked like a BB gun. I, I promise you, I paid it no attention. So I'm on the phone. We're getting ready for a session at the church, and I hear a pop. I look to the back because to me, the pop came from the back. Pay it no attention. But I remember right after the pop, they drove off really fast. So I. I hear a pop, kids are cursing and calling, calling me name. But I'm real good because I had my Bible in there, too. So okay. I was good. I had my Bible. And that's what I'm going to call it. And so I'm headed okay. to the church. And when I get to the church, when I get to the church the next day, it's which is Sunday, um, Jeanette said, Pastor, there's, it looks, appears to be a hole in the front of your dash. I'm sorry, my um, the window. window. Wait a minute. Windshield. So I have a... Um, a couple of police officers at the church. Uh, the guy over the video department is a police officer. He comes and he checks. And it's a 22 yeah. hole in my windshield. The trajectory was coming towards me. And, and, and things like that. Just here's, here's my prayer. You're going to love this. I remove myself from, from the equation. I got a 22-year-old son that's kind of hot-headed. And the 18-year-old. And they go out a lot. When they leave, when I tell you guys I pray, yeah. Till they come back. Yes. Because I'm always supposed they get in that kind of situation. Yeah, man. So um, just uh, just a blatant racism that we well, still these are white see kids? That, that's these were white kids. Oh, yeah. I didn't I didn't get that part. Yeah, it was white kids. And they white brandished kids. the 22? They, they sure did. I saw the gun. But again, who, they're just acting up. You know, I'm trying to get to the church. You know, I got First of all, you're a real OG. Yeah, Somebody yeah, brandished yeah. the gun. You're like, eh, yeah, that's 22. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, and, and that, honestly, I promise you, yeah. the cops said the same thing, and that's what I'm thinking. More than just 22, it was a small handgun, and I, I know guns. I, it didn't, it never yeah, ever caused me to fear when I saw it, and I never, I didn't get scared until the next day to know that they actually shot that gun. Well, I got about three, four Bibles myself, so just understand, yeah. you know. I'm a Bible Bible carrier, a Bible toting preacher. <laughs> so uh, one one more thing, man, I wanted to to, uh, to ask you about before yeah. we talk about this movie. Uh, you went to visit um, um, uh, Micah Stampley? Not yet. We're going to talk today. So yeah. you're in route to talk to him, man. He, he, Isn't he, that crazy? He he's my friend. He yeah. um, wow. Yeah. I mean, just just to imagine that, man. Yeah. We, we're, we're fathers, and um, yeah, it was rough last night for him. And um, he's a good kid, and I call him a kid because. I mean, I've, I've been in these, these young men come to me when there's issues, and I've been like a father to them for yeah. years, and um, so let's really keep him in prayer. We want to try to um, just be there for him in a time when folk are saying things they have no clue, and, and we don't mean any harm, and, I, and, and we kind of got him to laugh a little bit, but yeah. Mike is just a good guy. Yeah. He, he's one of those. You know, you don't, maybe you know this, maybe you don't. Um, Zaccardi, when he talks about you, he, yeah. last time I talked to him about you and kind of dug in, he got emotional yeah. because you have been, man, so much to him. Yeah. We can't do it today, man. I, just yeah. a little bit about that relationship. Um, All right. Um, yeah. These guys, man, their lives uh, are challenged daily because – Living these lives in front of cameras, it's huge. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Cardi, I raised from three or four years old. Um, wow. He was a horrible child. <laughs> <laughs> and I limit what camera can I look? But he, he said was the same bad. thing. He really did say the same he thing. He was though. bad. He was like the bad, bad. <laughs> like, I wish I can't even tell you the stuff that Cardi would say out of his mouth. But he could always sing. And his mother. Man would bring him to bring him to um, Charlotte and just put him in our care. Okay. And um, uh, he's going through something right now, real tough. I want you guys to really pray for him. Indeed. But he's getting it. He's he's waking up. And that's the only thing. And, and, and I think w w w what, what I am to them, in that same text, Numbers 18, um, the Lord said, you won't partake of the stuff, the land that you see. He said, but I am your portion. And that's what I try to leave with these young men. You know, God is your portion. You don't compromise for nothing. Whatever God has for you, he's going to get it to you. So um, 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 he, he means the world. Uh, he's an exceptional talent. People don't know I made it out. First of all, Carter and I have 
uh, songs. We got a catalog. Of, we could just release. Are you serious? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm working right now on a worship song with Cardi and I. And uh, we're doing the acoustic, me, Cardi, and acoustic guitar. Whoa, but Zacardi, Zacardi came in the studio. I made it out was a testimony song. I, I produced some music just for my church. church. It was going to be this hot song we were going to do doing offering for VIP. Wow. So we're in there. I said, Cardi, come here. So Cardi gets a mic and I get a mic. And we just go for it. We sing it. 90% of I made it out is first take. We cleaned up a couple of things. Really? 90% of I made it out. All of Cardi's is, I think I cleaned up a couple of things I did. In another church, in another city, I was in uh, across the water from Jeffersonville, Indiana. It's Louisville, Kentucky. Wow. I was in Louisville, Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, and I finished my end. But yeah, so I made it out. It was just a whim, but hey, it's been blessing the nation. So I love it. So you're about to jump into uh, the whole Hollywood thing again. Where really uh, uh, is the uh, Hollywood uh, East. So, so tell me about that movie. My, my father, as I first stated, had a, a record deal given to him in 1947. In 1947, he convinced 20 people to leave Liggett and Myers, 20 people in 47 to leave their factory job because he convinced them they were going to make it to the big time. Mm. They get on this bus and they head towards mm. uh, uh, New York and uh, right outside of Durham, um, um, uh, the clan turned uh, three clan members. He told me three of them. We added a couple of them in the movies, but okay. they turned the bus around and shot the tire out. And they had to walk back. That walk back was so discouraging for him and his family. So in the movie, I tell a lot of things that discourage him. At nine years old, he lost his mother, and his father would literally beat those children and um, and go to New Jersey or other cities to meet his women. Amen. But the kids never knew when he was coming home. And that's important because um, he would give them chores. He told one of the boys, cut wood and nobody can help you. And he lays his hand. My daddy goes out to help him. And they thought they heard Papa coming through the woods. And the brother chops both of his fingers clear off. Well. He wraps his hand. And for two weeks, he doesn't tell anybody that he got his fingers cut off because he didn't want his brother to get in trouble. So they, said, they split the kids up. Um, oh, he invented man. a block. Wow. He invented a block. And this block was cost efficient for Adams Concrete in Durham. They promised him, we're going to put you in the patent and you're going to be a rich man. I lived with him most of my life. The check never came. Wow. So all the things. So I chronicle his story with uh, a tour with James Cleveland, Mahia Jackson, the Dixie Hummingbirds, and the Caravans. And you're going to love this movie. James never shows up to the tour. So they actually hook up again later on, and Mahia checks him uh, okay. real good. So it's all the music is original. It's called The Lost Song. And you're going to really, um, my son, John John, John Peaky III, he plays my dad from age 15 to 37. Sicardi plays the Uncle George. And this is great. Bishop Ranch Allen plays my father from 37 to 57. Let me tell y'all something. Wow. I took all that pretty white hair and, yeah, all that jewelry off. And when I tell you he did an exceptional job. Really? You're going to love this movie. Y'all going to love it. When, when is it coming out? Well, we're just in editing now. I'm kind of stubborn. I really want to edit it myself. And the reason I want to present the project like the story. I don't yeah. need somebody telling me, well, you don't need that. You know, you're going to love this movie. We talk about the Chicken Shack. Chicken Shack was a club down in uh, Alabama. And when Mahalia Jackson, this is a true story, Lonzo told me, sometimes the hotels, they wouldn't allow them in because they, they were black. So they would drive and find places in the woods to cook out or camp out, just making it to the next day. And what you're going to love about it is I present this gospel music, what we went through to get it to the people of God. So you got my Haley Jackson walking in a, 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 a juke joint, and um, I have um, Bishop Neil Roberson. He's playing the Ju Ju July Jeffress. Whoa. He's playing his harmonica, and he's in there, and he's singing the blues. Um, uh, Shrimp it, baby. Uh, and Mahalia comes <laughs> through the back and gets the microphone. Who played Mahalia? Uh, Charisma Evans out of Dallas. Okay. Yeah, okay. She, she plays Mahalia. She does a great job. She walks in, takes the microphone. Club owner goes crazy because he don't want no gospel. He said, get these gospel folk away from here. But she takes the same groove and says, can't nobody... Can't nobody turn me around. It's so good. How you just effortlessly do that, yeah, man? Yeah, yeah. Make some noise for John P. Key, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah.
the blessings of God, the favor of God continue to thank flow you, on man. you, man. I thank God for your consistency yeah. you. and that the word relevant is one that I don't know. I feel some type of way when people say, oh, they're relevant again or whatever. I don't think that if you do ministry, you're ever irrelevant. Right, right, right. And one thing about you is that you have always, yeah. again, my goat when I think about the goat, yeah. but you have always been that person that you can walk into a room. I, final question, I'm done. Yeah. I know I wouldn't want to come behind you at a concert. Who do you not want to come behind clothes at a concert? Wow, I got a couple. Um, it's some new kids out there, man, that I love. It's a kid. Uh, he's from my hometown. But you're John P. Key. Come on. I'm John P. Key, but it's still, his name is Isaiah Templeton. And I want I want okay. Isaiah to okay. go and close it out. Let yeah, me do okay. what I do. Okay. And I'm gonna let Isaiah, you know, I don't know if grandma gonna stay, but look, Isaiah <laughs> Templeton, he he has something. He has something unique. Uh Gene Hodges. Am I saying his name right? Is that his name? Gene Gene Hoskins. Yeah, Gene Hoskins. Gene Hoskins. Another kid that's amazing. He's out of Durham. So maybe that's why. But uh there's just some great gifted talent. I got one more and I'm gonna shut up. Up. That Crystal Rucker, bro. Oh man, that's a problem. Yeah, that problem. Yeah. She's a problem. Her middle name is Jesus. That's Crystal Jesus Rucker. <laughs> yeah. One more time for John P. Key. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you. Indeed.